This week on Elkara Ham Radio, we're going to install some new electrical sockets to replace some faulty ones in the Monticello repeater jack. And we're also going to install some additional EMT for those circuits. That's what's coming up this week on Elkara Ham Radio. <laughs> Well, this is KY4BDP Brian, and uh, we wanted to bring you in on an impromptu workday where we were working at the Monticello Repeater Shack. And this is not, you know, specifically ham radio related. We're doing electrical work inside the shack because we basically put in just enough electric to get the repeaters back on the air when we put the shack into place. But now as we're adding more repeaters and equipment, we need, we need more power receptacles and we need more circuits so that each piece of gear can be on its own circuit. So we have AC4DM putting in a new receptacle and uh, he's just finishing up the box as we look at it here. And another thing that I wanted to mention here because we sometimes have folks who, you know, they're looking for juicy ham radio things. What we always try to show since these are club based videos is that there's more to ham radio than just doing antenna reviews or radio reviews. It's also doing your shack or wherever you happen to have your repeaters. And if you're building a brand new shack, you might actually have to install the same electrical that you see Don working on today. This particular receptacle uh, is loose. That's the only reason we're taking it apart, but it uh, was when it was put in originally, we probably only had the one screw. And you can see the green screw there. So we're actually going to add a second screw to just give it some stability. So Don has done that and we move on. We're gonna install some EMT as well. That's the metal tubing that you see the receptacles are uh, connected to as well. And that's how we run the Romex for the electrical to each outlet. In this case, Don's gonna go ahead and plug the air conditioner back in. And we're gonna make sure that it comes on. We had already kept the power off on that circuit. We put the power back on at the main circuit breaker and we plugged in the air conditioner and everything is good to go. Here in Kentucky, it gets hot and humid and inside these insulated steel buildings, it doesn't get hot, hot, but uh, a little bit of AC doesn't hurt. We just try to keep the temperature down below, I think 80 or 75, somewhere in that ballpark and also to keep some of the humidity out of the room. Now Don's installing a brand new receptacle here. He's removed the ears off the actual receptacle so that it can fit behind the plate. And then he's gonna install that on a piece of conduit here. This will give us yet another circuit that we can connect radio gear and other types of equipment. We're fortunate and we've said this many times to have somebody like Don as uh, not only the president of the club, but also just with so many electrical skills uh, in, in addition. And he's not the only one, we actually have two or three members. Now we're gonna test that circuit by turning on the breaker. And we have yellow lights and no red. So that means we have everything connected correctly. Now we're gonna do some more EMT fitting and we're gonna install a brand new run of EMT to go further along the wall in the shack. You can see it's coming into the breaker box there. And we're also just trying to find out what would be the level for this piece of conduit as it uh, goes across the back wall of the room. Don's gonna mark that. And then eventually we're gonna install some conduit uh, brackets to keep it affixed to the wall at a fairly level height. Now you can see that little black mark. That's where he plans to put his screw and then the bracket. I guess this is also a good place to mention that even though this was a part of the abandoned repeater uh, series and the shack is brand new, one of the things that Chris and I emphasize with other clubs is you want projects to keep your members busy. And as we watch Don go through the motions of installing the brackets and, and talking about those, um, I want the, the, the folks that are watching this video to think about what are some projects that your club is looking to do um, and you'll find that many times a project will have uh, future 
ancillary projects off of that. For instance, our emergency communications trailer, we've had multiple additional projects with that to add additional functionality to the emergency communications trailer. And here we have uh, our shack for the Monticello repeater and uh, installing this additional electrical work is yet another project that we have where we can provide additional functionality within the shack for additional repeaters. And this is important because you wanna find those types of projects that have different tiers of difficulty as well as different levels of additional projects that can come along with it. So Don is finishing up the bracket here for this piece of conduit and we're going to be installing uh, a, an even newer piece than this and we'll show you how that process works in a minute. So you're learning additional skills. It's not just about ham radio sometimes. And uh, one of the things that I've said many times is I've learned so many different new skills and procedures, processes, watching Don go through his process. So he's just getting an idea uh, for fitment here. He's actually not gonna put the additional box there. We'll actually wanna shorten that just a little bit so that that goes across the wall, actually even to the other side eventually. But for now, it's generally where he wants it. And we've got more or less level. Not a bad place to be. Previous government workers. Prior government workers. Now we're back over at the actual box and Don has installed additional breakers, which I wasn't able to get on camera on this particular trip, but he installed, I believe, four additional breakers. That, the, that way the AC will be on its own breaker, different repeaters will be on their own circuit, uh, as well as other equipment like the Wi-Fi router and so forth. And here we're measuring the length of the new conduit that we plan to install. So up to this point, we've basically been just fiddling with conduit that was already in the shack, either replacing faulty uh, um, outlets or installing new outlets. But Don wants yet another circuit. And right now, although we do have the AC plugged in on that bottom circuit, he wants to install a circuit just for the air conditioner. And that way, if for some reason that socket or that breaker were to trip, it wouldn't take down anything but the piece of equipment plugged into it. When we buy these uh, metal insulated shacks from a local source, uh, they don't come with anything on the inside. And if you'll go back and look at the abandoned repeater site, you'll see how the shack was totally empty. We even had to install the AC, the lighting, uh, and the panel and the electrical work to get it to where it is today uh, for ready for equipment. And this is, again, one of those projects that you'll have additional projects sprout from it. Now, Don has the Conduit Bender 1000 here, and he's gonna take a piece of this EMT so that it actually can go along the wall and traverse a corner uh, nice and neatly uh, and uh, essentially flush with the wall of the shack. And I'd never seen a piece of equipment like this because my job doesn't work with this type of uh, metal bending, but Don has done this type of conduit bending many, many times, and this is very small conduit. He actually worked in nuclear power plants and had to utilize hydraulic base benders for some of the pipes and conduit that they use there. But this is a nifty little piece of kit uh, that's going to give him roughly a 90 degree, and you can actually, it is stamped with different degrees, so you can actually bend it to what your needs are. We're trying to do a 90 degree here so that it'll fit in that corner nice and neatly. Let's watch Don go to work. Now for some of you, you've probably seen this piece of equipment before, but I'm always just kind of amazed because I'm an IT guy and I, I don't do physical stuff like this very often, if at all. And to see the types of tools that are available out there for this kind of work, you know, it makes total sense when you see it, but then you wonder, well, who came up with that idea? But now we've got a piece of conduit and we just need to measure the two ends to make sure it's gonna fit in the space that we need. So Don has his old timey ruler here, the, the sectional ruler that some of you will also remember from maybe back in your uh, older days. Some of you are too young to remember that type of a ruler, but they're still around. We need to measure from the box to the corner and Don's already measured from the corner to the other wall. So we're just trying to get that other measurement. And then he'll mark that 
probably with uh, uh, a Sharpie or something like that. How much do we and need? then we will cut this There's piece 62. here in just a moment. So he's taking into account the bend as well as the center point. And again, this just comes from experience. One of my best friends always says, you want to get good at something, cut wood. You know, if you want to get good at cutting wood, just cut more wood, even if it's just taking a two before and cutting it a hundred times so that you get good at cutting. And Don has done this so many times, he's not only good at the cutting, but the measuring and understanding in his head what he's uh, where it needs to fit so he's his brain works in three dimensions and some people have that skill in that type of uh, brain power I am not one of those people but uh, thankfully Don is my brother is KY4 CKP he can do 3d work in his head so we have the right saw for the job And there we go. He's gonna swage out the hole a little bit, make sure that we don't have any burrs using the best tool we had at the time. Looks like he's got a pair of uh, pliers there. And now we've got it basically uh, up against the wall to a degree and we'll attach it to the sub panel first and then uh, install a bracket. And then on this wall that he's on right now, making sure that it's level. And then we'll install a bracket on the other wall. So again, these are just skills. Uh, is it ham radio? No, technically no, but yes. Again, we want you to see what might go, some of the things you might put in a shack if you're installing this for your repeaters. Uh, keep in mind, we have solar on this. We have uh, already, I think we have four repeaters working oh, out of this shack. Um, and uh, the electrical is just a necessary component of this. So when you're looking at your membership, Try to find those skill sets in your membership and then try to come up with projects for the upcoming year and bring those skill sets to bear like you see here. Like I said, we've got three or four members that could have done the exact same work uh, as what Don is doing here. This was what we call an impromptu workday, so it wasn't one on the schedule, but uh, we still get a lot done. Now, let's listen to Don as we talk about what we've been doing. One quarter of an amp on that circuit. Should be the same, should it? More than, more than four amps. Oh, wow. Six point... Six amps? Six point one? Six point one, one whatever on... Because the air conditioner is basically running on it. AC's on that one. Mm -hmm. And the other... So that's one circuit running yeah. something. Yeah, that's down here. That's right. running... This up here. All right. And it's, that goes over there, and that's what's running the the DMR. Okay. That's all we're seeing any. That's point three, point three, three one. Yeah. And then uh, that one. There's five point two. Oh, that's the AC. Five, right. That's your AC only right yeah. there. See. So now you can see that not only have we seen what the current is per leg, there's two legs going into that box, but we also could see it per circuit or per outlet. We're now gonna replace the iota, which helps us with battery maintenance. If this, as long as this iota is in there and plugged in, it's not running on battery power, theoretically. Unless the power goes down, then it will switch to all over the battery. What's nice about the iotas is that they'll maintain your battery and they'll also do a maintenance cycle to break up sulfides in the battery. And Don's been using IOTAs for 20 plus years, I think, and he's just, he really likes them. There are a lot of products out on the market that'll do the same thing, but, uh, but he's always been partial to those. They've done him a really good service. And so you'll see those throughout our videos, even in the in, uh, MCOM trailer. Now we're gonna check the battery and make sure that the IOTA is putting out more than 12 volts. And it should be up in the 14, over 14 and a half if it's maintaining the battery. And sure enough, we're getting about 14.68, nearly 14.7. And it has the circuitry on the inside to monitor that voltage and monitor how the battery is uh, taking in that voltage. And it'll go through different cycles. 
As we pan here in the shack to show you everything that we've done up to this point, uh, GMRS, DMR, packet, uh, as regular as well as a two meter repeater and a six meter hey. repeater. You can see the cans in the back corner. Um, this is a multi level project. The shack was one project, getting it installed was another, and then getting the repeaters in there more and so on. Find these types of projects for your club. You'll be glad you did because it keeps your members happy and involved. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4 BDP Brian. We hope you enjoy these videos. Give us a thumbs up, let us know, give us a, a little bit of interaction on the video. This helps the algorithm quite a bit and lets us know if this content is something that you wanna see more of. We do plan to bring more videos of working inside this particular repeater shack. Take care everybody, and 73. Yeah, well,